Welcome back everyone, my name is Echo. Hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. In today's Minecraft video, we are back on Minecraft Pocket Edition, the Bedrock version for the latest beta and preview. This is the beta version 1.19.0.24. If you're in the preview, it will read version 1.19.0.25. There is no difference in the version, the preview is just plus one. Here is your official confirmation from Jay Megaspud, Minecraft Community Manager. We have a new Bedrock Beta rolling out now. Check out the change log. If you want the change log, it is down below. We have a lot to go through in today's video, including features that have been officially removed from the game. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is... I have a different background and I have no beta slash preview text at the top. So I'm using a global resource pack that brings you the new panoramic background. It's just called Preview Hider. Works for both beta and preview. It is created by Agent Mindstorm. If you want the link, it's down below in the description as well. It just gets rid of those horrible backgrounds and all the text. Trust me, we have a lot of things to go through in today's video, including features that are available in this beta slash preview that weren't even mentioned by the developers. Let's start off with the Minecraft preview on Xbox because you might be experiencing a few issues. It says Xbox Series X slash S players may receive an error message, and that will be code 0x8b050033 when launching Minecraft. Just uninstall and reinstall Minecraft Preview to complete the update and resolve the error. So if you do experience this issue as an Xbox player, all you gotta do is reinstall the preview, not Minecraft. Let's talk about another issue spectator mode. This is what it says in the official change log. Some of our more eagle-eyed players may have noticed that last week's beta and preview contained early functionality supporting the spectator game mode, which was accidentally made available in the game. We know that this is a top feature request for the Bedrock edition of Minecraft. And our developers have been working hard to bring you this feature. We are currently working on developing the first iteration of spectator mode to get your feedback to plan for the next iteration. However, we still have a lot of work to do. The first iteration will not be finished in time for 1.19, so we will be moving it to an experimental toggle in an upcoming beta. Until we have a more polished version for you, please consider that any content or maps built on this feature will not be supported as this feature will change and evolve. We won't be accepting bug reports related to spectator mode until our first iteration is released as the feature is likely to change during development. So the spectator mode, just like the RTX for Xbox, was a mistake. However, they have corrected themselves with spectator mode. It is definitely coming to Minecraft Bedrock Edition, which is going to open the possibility for things like hardcore mode. Now, don't panic too much because they actually haven't removed this from the game. If you are currently in the latest betas and previews as of last week, if you have the experimental toggles enabled, I usually just turn them all on, it still works perfectly fine. You have to type in forward slash game mode six. Game mode six will put you into spectator mode. Now, the first thing I want to do here is go back to creative. Because I did do a video on this, you're going to need to be in the jump functionality, then be in game mode 6. Your game will reload, but now you do have access to spectator mode. This is apparently a very early stage of development. But no, they didn't remove it from the game. 
which is fantastic of them to do. Thankfully, they have just corrected us on what was actually wrong with it. So, yeah, it is still in the game, still working correctly. So, if you want to mess around with it in iOS, Android, Windows 10, or Xbox in betas and previews, you can but you have to turn on experimental features. Let's get into features and bug fixes. Starting off with the recovery compass. A new recovery compass can be crafted with echo shards, which can only be found and are unique to ancient city chests. This is what it looks like, which we'll mess around with it. Let me just read you the rest of the details. Unlike a normal compass, the recovery compass will point to the last place you died if you are not in the dimension where you last died or you haven't died yet in your world it will randomly spin so yeah if you die now then this will point you to where you died just gonna kill myself didn't do it enough we'll do it one more time up we go game mode s i'm dead right now right so what I'm going to do is just grab my recovery compass real quick. Let's say I, I start over here. It's like, oh no, I've died. Where did I die? Well, this thing is going to point to where I last died, which is going to tell me where my stuff is, all my netherite stuff in there. So it's like, it's like, hey, Echo, you actually died right here. So I died right here and the compass is telling me where I died. So if you die like thousands of blocks away, it's a pretty good idea at your home location to have a few recovery compasses. Now, obviously, if the chunks haven't been reloaded, then your stuff is gonna stay there until you get there. So I think this is a great introduction. Now, a couple more things to understand here is it says it can be crafted with one compass surrounded by eight echo shards. And these are your echo shards, these things. So if you wanna craft one of these, you are going to need eight of these and one of these and the recipe is simple just like this round the outside round the outside we have ourselves the recovery compass and you've made yourself another one and yes they work inside the nether and yes they work inside the end however heads up it says echo shards will be available as loot in ancient cities in a future update so unfortunately you're not gonna be able to find these things just yet uh, they're officially not available in the ancient city locations, which kind of sucks because you introduce it But you don't put it into the loot chests uh, However, I do want to go to an ancient city just to double check considering the developers Made some mistakes in this week's beta. There is a perfect example as to why spectator mode is needed I don't gotta dig down and break so many blocks. I can just turn on spectator mode after locating an ancient city and just come down here and then do forward slash game mode creative everything reloads and i'm down here with no problems so as the developers are saying there is no shards available as of yet again i gotta double check this because there has been a couple of mistakes in the changelog this week missing announcements and features but it looks like the loot is nowhere near on par with Java Edition. Let's hope that it does get updated sooner rather than later. And we'll just try these ones one more time. There's, see, the loot, the loot really isn't that great. Like, I still can't justify coming down here. Trying to fight a warden that has a sonic boom attack now. And the loot not being great. So yeah, these will be updated soon enough. Once again, in this week's beta slash preview, we've had some changes to the skulk blocks. This week is the Skulk Shrieker. It says, tweaked the shrieking particles of the Skulk Shrieker. We do have a bug report. Shriek particles are visually different from Java Edition. This is the bedrock animation on how it works. You see that it's like a perfect circle going round. If we go back to the Java one, you can see how the particles go up on an angle and are much faster. So if we get this, place it down and trigger it, you can see it's now on an angle. However, the sounds are still not the exact same in my opinion. They still sound slightly different. Also, Skulk Shriekers should not be triggered by redstone activation. In last week's beta and preview, you could flick a lever 
Yes, it would turn on this redstone feature, but it would also activate this doing the shrieking sound. This change puts Bedrock on par with Java. Added can underscore summon block state to skulk shriekers that determines whether a shrieker can trigger a warden to spawn. Only skulk shriekers placed during world generation in the deep dark and ancient cities will have this state set to true. We do have a bug report. So basically what's going to happen with this change here is when we play this video, if you place down a skulk shrieker yourself, obviously it would activate the animation and the warden would spawn so you can see the redstone one working there as well as the warden coming out of the ground that won't happen anymore so what this means is when i activate this no warden at all is going to spawn because this block was placed by the player and this one has the block state set to false let me just show you because there is a specific command you can type to set it as true if you use this specific command, as you can see here, we have the can underscore summon set to true. If we place this now and go over this, this will now enable the possible spawning of a warden. And as you can see, out comes the warden. Because this actual item is set to true. Those are set to false. So what that's going to typically do is stop anyone making a warden farm above ground. You are actually going to have to do this inside of an ancient city. Unfortunately, there's no F3 functionality. So we can't just look at this. Because on Java Edition over here with the debug screen, it would tell you if it's set to true or false. So yeah, that's all that's going to do. It just makes the game a little bit harder for everyone. The next change, running away from a Skulk Shrieker during Shrieking is no longer a viable way of preventing the summoning of a Warden. So again, same rules apply. If I was to set this down here like this and I was to try and run away now, that's not going to stop the Warden from spawning. He's still going to spawn. The Skulk Shrieker no longer attempts to spawn the Warden in peaceful mode. The Skulk Shrieker now spreads the highest threat level amongst players in the vicinity, not the threat level of the closest player. So if you are activating a Shrieker with your friends, you are all going to be in trouble. It's not going to be the person who activates the Shrieker. You're all gonna be in trouble changes with the warden the warden now has a hurt animation when taking damage now we do have a bug report for this one but basically when the warden was taking damage previously whether it's from a player or whether it's from a sword or a potion or anything at all it didn't previously have like poison or pain sounds or any kind of sounds at all when being hurt. Fixed a bug where the Warden's ribcage UVs were overlapping their right tendril UVs. We got a bug report. Warden UV texture overlapping. So looking at this, you can see at this point here it's overlapping, which I think was causing a few issues. Now on Bedrock, it's been fixed. Warden will now prioritize players over mobs when angry. So yeah, no using mobs as your escape route. It says improved Warden's suspect tracking gameplay behavior and increased the Warden's sniff range. So the Warden is now gonna sniff you out from a longer range. Again, this is a Java parity. The one with the I showed you over here, this one right here, which is the Warden now has a Hurt animation. That's also a parity, and this one is also a parity as well, and this one. So, yeah, a bunch of Warden parities this week, including him sniffing players from a longer distance. Now, you've seen it happening already, but spawning a Warden in creative mode no longer applies the darkness effect to the player. Also, a Java parity. It is currently not going to make it dark for me. If I go to forward slash game mode S, however, 
you can see it appears. Back to creative. This effect is eventually going to run out as well. Oh, you killed my llama friend. He's been here since the beginning. But yeah, if you spawn it in creative now, you're no longer given the darkness effect. Reinforced deep slate. Reinforced deep slate can no longer be pushed by pistons. So strange one. I guess this is a Java parity as well because you could previously do this on Java. Don't remember it being removed, but it must have been. So yeah, the reinforced deep slate can no longer be pushed from A to B. Um, so I'm guessing parity change. Frogs. Frog light and frog spawn blocks now have new sounds. So these now match Java as well. Down to placing and breaking. Same with these. And it's just this to do with all of them. So that now happens. However, one more thing here. Frog spawn is now called frog spawn. As in all one word. Developers... What are you lying for? Because if we type in frog, it's frog space spawn. It's meant to be frog spawn as one word. So a change that they said they did, but they didn't. We have a few changes with the goat horn in brackets experimental. Goat horn sound is now instant. So that means as soon as you play it, it does the sound instantly. It says added goat horn variants to pillager outposts. Oh, look at that in the middle of this location, which by the way, this is a random seed that I found. Um, it's brought me one of these. Let's go and check. Honestly, one of the most random seeds I've ever found. It was a savannah village in the middle of the ocean with a pillager outpost right next to it. So what this means is you can find horns in here. This one is called feel. However, you can also found, find, if we type in uh, goat horn here, you can see here you can find any of these versions. Admire, call, feel, seek, sing. Y you can find them all. It's just RNG. The next feature we say goodbye to, they have removed copper horns. So if we type in horn, there is no longer a copper horn. It has been officially removed from the game. This is what the developers had to say. Removed copper horn. Although community feedback was mostly positive, the copper horn was a fun experiment that didn't quite live up to our design goals. We have decided to remove it. We understand people might be sad, but to be able to try out new and interesting things, we need to... Be able to remove experimental features sometimes. This leaves space for even better features in the future. I'll be honest, the copper horn was quite underwhelming. I was expecting a little bit more from the goat horn. I was actually expecting it to be linked to the warden. So that's been removed. These are still in the game. Getting into touch controls. Players. Can now change hotbar item slot while in a boat. And this is all to do with the new controls. Last week they changed it where you can actually use a boat with the new touch controls. This week you can now change your hotbar item. Changes with the LA. Fixed a crash that could occur if a non-owner player takes an item from the LA while it was chasing its owner. Someone's trying to steal loot from it. So if you had this and you gave it this... And then your friend came in and stole this from the LA, your game would crash. Basically, it's like a protection thing, right? Well, now the LA is no longer going to crash your game. Just like on Java Edition, the LA now regenerates two health each second. Boat with a chest. The group of boats with a chest now has the correct translation in inventory. We have a bug report. So for some people, it was reading item group dot name dot chess boat. It's now been fixed. As you can see, it just says boats now. So yeah, simple fix, but it's a fix nonetheless. Mangrove boat with chest now has a crafting recipe. So this is super strange. In last week's beta slash preview, you had a mangrove boat and you had a chest, but you couldn't combine them together to get the mangrove uh, boats with a chest. So it's now been fixed and you can sail the seven seas. Mud bricks. 
Crafting mud bricks now correctly gives four mud bricks from one craft. So somebody complained about this in my comment section. They were like, hey, you don't get the right items. Now you do. You will actually get given four mud bricks. So gameplay changes. It says here, set stack limit for brewing station result slot to one. As to avoid getting input stacks being overwritten when the brew is complete. So I apologize. I'm not quite sure what this is referring to. If somebody could explain in the comment section, that would help me and others out. I was just not sure about it. Fixed crash in block underscore place a component when the block parameter is an unknown block. Blocks affected by gravity now fall correctly on replaceable blocks. We got a bug report. So this is a parity change here. Gravity blocks don't fall when placed on replaceable blocks. Here's the affected issues that people were having with ferns, large ferns, vines, glow lichen, etc. Um, and this is what is meant to happen. And this is what was happening for Bedrock players. You could actually suspend those blocks in the sky. Here is your demonstration. We have a block there. It's now replaced. It's now replaced. And it's now replaced. So, yep. Another parity change. Another bug fix. And finally, slabs can now be placed continuously. We got a bug report. So this one was annoying and was a problem for a little bit of time. So whenever you try to continuously place down a slab, you couldn't. You could only do one. I'm glad they fixed this. General changes fixed an issue where clicking on the top row of pixels of a button in the new create new world screen didn't properly trigger its action. We got a bug report. This is a really, really strange one. And I don't know how people find this, but thank you for finding it. Basically, keep an eye on when he's trying to tap. You can see he's tapping on a certain location on these buttons and it just doesn't work at all. It doesn't register you clicking to go into the old design or creative. So that's been fixed. Graphical changes fixed a bug causing the fire animation to flicker when the player is standing in a lava cauldron while in creative mode. Items. It says fixed incorrect names. A white dye, black dye, brown dye, and blue dye. Stability and performance fixed enchantment option on pocket UI profile not being displayed. Vanilla parity, this is to do with blending several improvements to level chunk blending command block changes when a command block clones itself twice with the forward slash clone command. The cloned command block will now activate on the first try. Now, we have two things here. Two very, very important things that the developers didn't mention in the change log. Mangrove swamps. Mangrove swamps now match Java edition. And this is to the latest Java edition. In terms of like the things that can spawn there. Them being dense. Let me show you. So the first thing I want to tell you is that the mangrove seed is now parity on Java and Bedrock. If you find a seed on Java edition, type it out on Bedrock and go to the exact same location. The mangrove swamp will be there. Another change they have done to Bedrock mangrove swamps is they are a lot denser and thicker and taller. So much improvement, but no mention at all in the official change log at all. So... A big shout out to Beacon who told me about this on Twitter. Without him, I wouldn't know this change. So they're a lot denser and thicker. Go and mess around with them. You'll see the probagools on the trees. Um, they've also reduced how many bee nests will actually generate in here. They have also added moss carpets, which was previewed to us during Minecon with the concept art. So you can find them here. You can find the bee nests. But my favorite change is to do with the mud blocks because mud, mud blocks are no longer just one layer. Mud blocks will now actually go down until a player reaches stone. So it's going to be a great place to get your mud blocks. Check that out. So overall, super impressed. Let's see what this is. We are currently standing on level 65. This goes as high as... Well, this one's a 92. Again, though, they're not as big as Java Edition. I might just get very unlucky when finding out these seeds, but I've just been finding Java seeds and then typing them out on Bedrock. But I'm a huge fan of these. 
I'm super excited to see if we're going to get any more changes with this. But yeah, we now have Mangrove Seed Parity and Feature Parity. Another strange one left out by the developers. The Swift Sneak Enchantment has been added. Just go and type in Swift and you will see that we have Swift Sneak 1, 2 and 3. Also going to be an enchantment that can be found in ancient cities. I imagine the loot also hasn't been updated. So let me just explain a couple of things here. Um, I'm going to go forward slash game mode survival. So originally this was going to be for boots. It was an enchantment for boots. Boots in there. That goes inside of there. However, the developers with community feedback decided that it was going to be a leggings enchantment. Let me just gain some levels. And let me show you how this works. Before we do this, let me just show you what it's like when you are just doing this with regular sneaking. There isn't too much of a change here at all. So it's as simple as obviously leggings in there and enchanted one. So let's change these out and see if there is an improvement here. So you go a little bit faster. You don't notice too much difference in third person, but in first person you definitely do. So you can see here. Let's move on to the next one. This is going to be swift sneak do you do start to notice a big difference here so this is going to be the enchantment to get you in the ancient cities in and around them sneaking around streakers and skulk blocks but you can see we're moving a little bit faster here and then you want to go speed while crouched you go one in there one in there and we have the third one and we have it on nope we don't we do now you can see here how much faster you are so yes i am crouched so it's really, really good. I, I like the fact that they are expanding enchantments to be on the likes of your leggings. We definitely need more exclusive enchantments for that category. So yeah, we'll go like this and then we'll take it off and you'll see how much slower you are. So yeah, strange that developers did not mention this in the official change log, but Swift Sneak is now available. And last but not least, technical updates. Let's read the change log. There isn't too many technical changes this week, but we do have changes to commands, mobs, molang, general. And it says known issues in this beta. Interactive blocks such as hoppers cannot be shift placed continuously without opening the UI. And that's it. But wait, it's not. Because guess what's also available in this week's beta slash preview? The infinite XP glitch. It's still here. Let's check out my levels. So, yeah, all you gotta do is open a furnace, a smoker, or a blast furnace with something that can be cooked or smelted. Tap this on your third inventory slot and give yourself as many levels as possible. People are saying that this is a placeholder for XP farms. I don't know what, what it's for, but if you want a limited XP, that's the way you gotta do it. Another day, another week, another beta, and another preview. I hope I've kept you all updated. If you're still watching right now, you are the MVP. Let me know in the comments section, because I really appreciate you. Have a great day. I'll see you all in the next video.